What is good, Prima Gang? It's your girl, Primitiva. Now that Pokemon Sword and Shield has been out for a month, I'm sure that everyone is either catching the new Pokemon, breeding Shinies, or playing competitive, like me. And of course, with a new generation comes new Pokemon. Well, what's better than that? New Pokemon, more lore. And what I mean with more lore is more Pokedex entries. And oh boy, did we get a whole bunch this generation. They're all very, very, very interesting. But today, I'm just gonna be focusing on three in particular which are the pseudo-legendary line of this generation. Meet, Dreepy, Dracloak, and finally, the beast that is known as Dragapult. And look at that! We finally have another set of Dragon and Ghost-type Pokémon outside of Giratina. And these Pokémon surely give Giratina a run for its money with how awesome the new designs are. I mean, just look at those ghostly disappearing tails. Yeah, Giratina's got nothing on that, baby. Only problem with this typing is that it can't stop hitting itself. But hey, apart from that, it's still really good typing. But what makes these Pokémon so special? You know, outside of their pseudo status and their cool new typing. Well, it's Dreepy's Dex entry, which states, after being reborn as a ghost Pokemon, Dreepy wanders the areas it used to inhabit back when it was alive in prehistoric seas. This entry is really interesting because not only does it tell us the origin of its ghost typing, but it also tells us that it was once alive. Of course, it doesn't state when it was alive. No, that'd be way too much information. It just says that it was alive during the prehistoric times, which could mean honestly any time before humans came around. That does make me wonder though, is it possible that there's some other fossil Pokemon out there that are still alive today that have become ghost type instead of just, you know, becoming extinct? Like a ghost and water type Ammonite and Amistar just lurking around in the depths of the ocean. That instead of relying on human technology to come back, it did so on its own, through vengeance. And does this mean that you could classify these Pokemon as fossil Pokemon? And that maybe somewhere there's fossils of these Pokemon out there from the ancient past? And you could revive them and they'd become rock and dragon? Or maybe rock and water because they did used to live in the ocean. Wait a minute, could you say, I don't know, find a fossil of Shelter, which has been around since Ammonite and Amistar, and revive it. Could you do that? Which would technically make Shelter and Cloyster either a rock water type or rock and ice type. Ah, uh, now I have so many questions. Let's just focus on the pseudos instead though, because otherwise I'm gonna be talking way too much. So I'm sure many of y'all are wondering where, or should I say when, did these Pokemon exist? I think the best way to figure that out is by comparing these three Pokemon to any possible real-life inspiration. One big clue is the confirmation that it lived in the oceans. This makes a lot of sense if you look at their bodies. Their bodies are quite slender and long, which is a good adaptation for swimming in the water. Now, I have two proposed animals in mind that I think could be the possible inspiration for these Pokemon. For example, I think it's possible that these Pokemon may have been based on marine reptiles. Now, when you think of marine reptiles, you likely think of Mosasaurus, Plesiosaurus, or Ichthyosaurus, but none of those exactly look like these Pokemon, so what could it be? Well, the first thing that comes to mind mind is the Thalatosaurus, which is a marine reptile species from the late Triassic. As you can see, they share a lot of similarities, such as the claws and the long tail, of course. So I definitely do think it's possible that these animals might have been the inspiration for these Pokemon. However, as you can see, the big difference here is that Thalatosauruses didn't have those huge protruding horns just sticking out of the sides of their heads. Of course, it's definitely possible that these Pokemon just didn't have those huge protruding horns back in the day, and that they just grew in today's time. However, with Pokemon inspirations, I like to be very, very, very specific. So, is there actually a prehistoric animal that has such horns sticking out of its head? Yes, actually. Well, okay, not 100%, but definitely close enough. Meet Diplocolis an awesome amphibian that lived in the late Carboniferous to the late Permian. And I think this one definitely looks more like these Pokemon, don't you think? I mean, with a body like that, it almost looks like a Pokemon on its own. You can definitely tell that Game Freak took inspiration from this amazing creature. It's got the overall body type, such as the claws and the long tail, and of course, the weird horn sticking out of the side of its head. And it's even got a little bit of chub too, just like Dracloak and Dragapult. So, I'm sure you're wondering, what the hell did Diplocolas do with these weird horns? 
Well, that's not entirely known yet, as are a lot of things in paleontology. But it seems that it may have used these horns for generating lift in the water. Anyway, these Pokémon being amphibians instead of reptiles also makes a lot more sense if you look at their bodies. Dreepy, the first stage, starts out without its hind legs, just like salamanders, and it even has little things sticking out near its face that look very similar to gills. Now, of course we don't really know what Diplocolis's life cycle looked like, but since it's possible with salamanders, it may have been possible with amphibians back in the day as well. But then as Dreepy becomes a subadult in Dracloak, it does gain those hind legs, but they still don't look fully formed yet. But as it becomes the fully adult Dragapult, its limbs and tail are now fully formed. Although, yeah, it could have just been the ghost type causing all of this, like the missing limbs and stuff, but it does perfectly match a metamorphosis of an amphibian, so it just can't be a coincidence. Plus, Diplocolis and Dreepy, Draclock, and Dragapult all have a D as their first letter, so do we really need any more proof than that? There's only one problem with my hypothesis though, and that is that amphibians cannot live in salt water, so there's no way that this Pokémon could have lived in the seas. However, just sprinkle a little bit of Pokélogic on that, and I'm sure it's possible. After all, we have fire-breathing lizards and Pokémon that just defy all logic and reason, so I don't think a saltwater amphibian is too sir-fetched. So yeah, short video, but I really wanted to look into this, and, you know, spread the word a bit about this awesome prehistoric amphibian. As always, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Pokémon awesomeness, and be sure to hit that little bell. And just in case you want to help the channel even more, consider checking out my Patreon. I got some pretty neat rewards for pretty low prices. And last but not least, I also have a Discord, in case you want to come say hi to me. Both my Discord and my Patreon are in the description below. And with that being said, I hope you all have a good day, night, or morning, and as always, take care!